Hi, everybody. This is Debbie Dashinger on Dare to Dream, the award-winning podcast. I'm very excited that you're here with me uh, because the conversation today is actually the conversation that I want to be having with you. And you could see my guest who's already here and will be on just a little bit later. I wanted to do an auspicious show at an auspicious time. So I've got the mystical Oracle here, Leah Dunlap, who's been somebody I've known for a while and I'm super excited. I just feel like timing is perfection, right? And so she'll be here and if people have questions about their business or purpose, they can certainly chat, call, write. <laughs> you can use a modality. We're both psychics. You can even go that way if you want. We'll handle that. Her questions to you are, are you an intuitive entrepreneur or an inspired leader who wants to be a powerhouse business that makes money while making a difference in the world. If so, you're in the right place. You can find your unique life purpose with your business strategy through her. So you can create stability and lasting fulfillment. I think one thing that we're all seeing right now is how important that is for people who didn't have reserves going into these very interesting times or for people who are contemplating a switch from a job and may have been more recently confined or laid off. There's a lot of changes going on where people are considering and reevaluating. So that may be you too. This show, Dear to Dream, has been nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, also nominated for the Webby Awards. And you could subscribe to the show. We're on over 40 syndicated stations. I urge you to go to Apple Podcasts. You can easily subscribe there and leave a five-star review because other people who love this number one transformation conversation will be able to find it also on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger and the shows will come right to you, which I like. Ease is good. We are rating so high. You know, I, the most recent numbers that I saw were number 100 in all of the USA in self-improvement and Apple podcasts. And we are number 20 and under in about seven different countries. One of them is New Zealand and a lot of major countries tuning in and listening. And I make sure that this show is translated in every language that is available so y'all can reach it wherever you are in the world. And the show, thank you to Dr. Dane here in Access Consciousness, is sponsored by them. They do gorgeous energy work out into the world. And I am grateful for their friendship and sponsorship low these many years. If you would like to become a facilitator or go to a class or get some of their products, go to drdanehere.com. It's D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R.com as well as accessconsciousness.com. And the question is, would you like to unlock your unique purpose? My guest is Leah Dunlap, and she's known as the Oracle on Purpose. She's an intuitive business architect with 25 years of experience guiding entrepreneurs to unlock and capitalize their business genius to find purpose, process, and prosperity at their business sweet spot. Leah's inspired programs and practical services have helped thousands of clients in over 76 countries. She helps leaders avoid the mistakes that basically keep them frustrated if they're doing shallow work and anxious about having their gift die within them. She also helps conscious leaders who are determined to have a major impact on the world, yet are still struggling with overwhelm and a lack of clarity, understand exactly what their next steps are. You can go to her website to find out more. It's oracleonpurpose.com. And I welcome the amazing, beautiful Leah Dunlap to the show. Welcome to Dare to Dream. Thank you for having me, Debbie. I am so honored to be here and to be a part of this amazing technology, um, <laughs> you know, leading edge that we have now where we're able to really share these messages and talk about purpose. And Daring to Dream, I think, is such a great um, you know, topic in general, an umbrella to have these conversations under, because it is something right now, as we said, that we were talking about before, that people are really looking at what does their look, what does their life look like now that things are changing, as you were saying, like, how do we address maybe perhaps the elephant in our room that we haven't been looking at for a while, now that we've had this pause in our current experience that is so different from what we've known in the past. 
And I'm just thrilled that you're, um, you've given me the opportunity to share and, and be a part of this and that you are so, such a leader in showing up to help other people push their own boundaries and, and really, you know, hold themselves to that high standard of living on purpose. So thank you so much for having me here. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the, the idea of some of the words that you use that are, you know, really like sumptuous business architect, which to me means you develop a baseline for somebody and you build something strategically, architecturally, all the way up. And I like the fact that you talk about the discomfort of being who we are when in fact we know in our hearts we're actually a conscious leader, right? But really frustrated and overwhelmed. And I really mean it like now more than ever, right? If people were thinking about it before, they're thinking about it now. And I want to add in the piece, there are things that I have put off. I do travel. I love travel. World travel, however, has been such a big bucket list item for me. And to the extent to which I desire it, I have not expressed it. And during this time of confinement, if you will, or quarantine, it's one of the things that's really coming up for me. It's like how precious and fast life is and to what end have I put that off? Or, and is that is that not okay with me? Can we talk about that a little bit, the pieces for people that have been okay that they have ignored, but now it's like, no, not anymore, not so much. Absolutely. I think that any time in our lives when we find ourselves in crisis, these things bubble up to the surface, things that we have, like you said, you know, either ignored or put in the back burner or sometimes just not even acknowledge that they are inside of us. And I love the fact that you talk about, um, for you especially, travel is being obviously so impacted right now with the fact that we can't move about that it does call into us a longing. And I think everyone who's out there who's listening to this, who has the longing that now is really perhaps even, um, you know, calling out to them from within, like, why didn't we do this yesterday? You know, because there's that place where you can go. Or the other piece is that you can go, hopefully, um, with some insight here, you can go to the place that how do you make sure that when whatever travel bans, whatever bans are around you right now are lifted, that you are, are ready to do it. You're ready to take that, that leap um, into whatever it is that's been calling out for you to, to t participate in. And that, I think, is one of the beautiful aspects of what's happening right now is it you you know being alone by yourself for some time and being isolated can bring these things up and if you are supported and you have the right tools and you and the right attitude you can actually benefit from that you can actually take this time on if you will and make a difference that way you are known for turning gremlins into allies so i'm curious about how do we harness the power behind beliefs how do they shape or how do they hinder our path Excellent um, question. And I think right now lots of people are having gremlin thoughts, you know. Um, the, the key point to me is we all have beliefs. They are always, um, you know, working in our, our subconscious mind and working on it, kind of creating our beliefs, or excuse me, our beliefs are creating our experiences to some degree. And so when we see ourselves falling prey, if you will, to negative beliefs or gremlin thoughts, it, they become self-fulfilling prophecies in some way or another, sometimes on a much bigger scale than we're expecting. Mm -hmm. So the better we can understand not only what our beliefs really are, and especially our core beliefs, like the things that we actually base our decisions on, and how we can actually use them and utilize them in that process, which is a natural process. We all have beliefs. We all have a subconscious. We all have a way of patterning that happens. And if we can actually use them to our benefit, right? to prosper, to realign our purpose, the better off we all are, which to me, ultimately, that's my goal is my mission is to have all of us living our purpose, because once we are, then of course, the universe is better off for it. So when you see for yourself that you have a belief that isn't moving you forward, rather than feeling like you have to shut it down or erase it or some other terminology you might hear, what if you actually asked it some smart questions? to figure out why it, was why it was invested in you in the first place. Like, why did it come? Where did it come from? What is it trying to tell you? 
sometimes our beliefs, even if they're apparently negative, right? The gremlin negative thoughts, they were designed to protect us for some for, for something or from something. And so if we can have a better conversation about why that belief is kind of coming to play, then we can actually utilize that pathway, the neural pathway that the belief is already ingrained in and imprint a new belief over it. Mm -hmm. And part of that is looking at like, is it true? Is there something about it that's true? What was the purpose of the belief? And how can we create a positive, powerful affirmation to supplant in its place? And to me, once we can break that piece apart, then what happens is we actually are, are in a way hacking <laughs> the negative belief and turning it on its head so that it becomes our ally. So that's, that's one of the ways that I think that, you know, most people now who are having, you know, waves of different ideas and concepts coming at them and good days and quote unquote bad days that in those moments, when you listen to the thoughts and the beliefs that are kind of bubbling to the surface that are causing you to feel um, perhaps fearful or frustrated, if you could take a moment and pause listen deeper and find out like what is it really about and sometimes it takes a couple of deep questionings and sometimes you need some support around that but you can get to the core of it and once you do you can change it so that it is actually working on your behalf so let me ask you this because uh we are getting some activity here and i want people to know because you haven't had a real opportunity to share what's possible if they talk to you, what would you, I have a question for you already, but in, just for the folks who are curious out there, what would you like them to ask? What type of question or how do they ask? Or do you need their full name or, and help me to help them be guided in this? Oops, I was pausing there. Yeah, um, for me really, uh, the, the best way to ask a question is to, um, I always say, don't try to trick me. I'm not here to be tricked. So, I, I, you know, in other words, like be honest with yourself with your question as much as possible. So if you have a question, um, just ask it as plainly as it comes to you because that, that helps me to tap into the Oracle and ask a direct question. If you do not, what you'll probably get back from me is a question. Okay, right? great. Because, so that's well, we what, have a question yeah. here. Right? This is from that's Sharon perfect. McRill. Um, and she said to you, I had to lay off my staff of 12 yesterday. Will they all come back? Will my business bounce back? So um, she has had an, actually she's an incredibly successful businesswoman. So I can imagine the impact that that has for her. And is there anything else you need or is that substantial? That's, that's good for now. So Sharon, what I got, and so this is something that just happens for me. I got what is, what is uh, for me, I get a, a physical reaction which is a flush and i got um when you asked about will they come back i got um it's it's yes and in other words there there's not as strong of a whole yes so it depends on um your plan for the next phase so if you have and i and first i want to say before i go any further is from a personal perspective I um, have other businesses as well, and we've had to look at some of those changes too, so I acknowledge that that's a, it's a very challenging moment to get to. And the fact that you care mm. for bringing them back, it's important. Like you're holding a vision for them to come back is important. So just know what, they're, what that looks like, and that's gonna help you to build something different that will allow them to come back. Um, your business will be different and come back you, your question was, will your business come back? Correct. Can read that uh, back. To I you had right? to lay off my staff of 12 yesterday. Will they all come back? Will my all business come. bounce back? Okay, great. Thank you for that clarification. Since I don't see the question. So the, so when you said that again, um, it's, they, they will come back. They will not all come back. That may not be because you don't bring them back. It may be because they're off to do other things. So they will come back. Those that come back, um, it's not all of them. Cool. I'm going to ask that. this on her behalf. Yeah. So what could she do in this gestation period? And by the way, I, I'm using words very specifically right. because my very interesting point of view is right now is that we are in a, a place before giving birth. So mm -hmm. this reset will be, of course, for the world, 
uh, I already believe that there's going to be tremendous good that comes out of this. And I think it's an intense time, a beautiful time, a painful time of introspection, because here's my oracle people. So let me just rip for a minute. Okay. Um, this is our time, the things we have not wanted to face, right? Because when everything stops and it's just mano y mano, woman y woman <laughs> locked in at home, it's like, what have you not done in your life that you've wanted to do but haven't faced? What about you haven't you faced? And you could escape into television, absolutely, or other modalities, or we could each use this time to really gracefully, lovingly take it on and be with what has always been there. And my question has been, what do you not want to know about yourself that you actually know that if you knew would change everything, but you really don't want to know? <laughs> and if you were to say it out loud or write it, what would that be? So it's very powerful. Absolutely. I totally agree. And uh, and in, in light of that, too, in the point of like, will her business come back? This is for everyone. Everyone's business is going to be different. It, it can't not be. As you said, this is a point where things are being shaken up on purpose. And yes, you will. You will rise to a new level if you take this time that we have and look at not only what your business is about, but how you're doing it. And we go back to me for in alignment to with re really, what is your core, what is your core purpose? Oh my God. And that I think when we look at, for example, with this one person here, Sherry, right? Sharon. Sharon. Um, those are the people that are going to fall away. If you can give grace to have those who come back come back in alignment and those who fall away, fall away in alignment, yeah. then you'll open more opportunities for better flow. And more importantly, what do you, yeah, the question just was, what do you want it to look like when it comes back? So taking this time to really, uh, yeah, clean, you know, cause we were talking about, you know, Mary Kondo, like clearing away the parts of your business that <laughs> really, really aren't, yeah. that really aren't, that really aren't um, aligned and that really aren't, don't make you hum. And some of, you know, not to say that some parts of our job, um, you know, can be not so much fun, but there are pieces of what you're doing now that you get to let go of and, and in, in no one will blink an eye because you're coming back differently. I have a piece I need to add here. And by yeah. the way, this is so live because this is so unexpected. I didn't, I'm not even have no intention to be a contribution around being an Oracle, but I have stuff that's coming down and how perfect. So I'm going to use myself as an example for Sharon's question, which clearly is kicking up a lot and is a really good question. Great question. And a very thoughtful question too. And I want to say one of the things that I received last year was a very strong divine guidance that was incredibly informative to me that told me, and I'll just be very blunt about it, but it said with gentility and love, Debbie, you're a shaman, you're a priestess, and you're a healer. And I immediately went to the negotiation table. Okay, I'm not going to see dead people. I'm not going to be like, what are we talking about? I do media. I love media. I know I'm a clairsentient, a claircognizant, but outside of that, what are you talking about? It was like really weird. Uh, and, but for four nights, this went on and I was not going to be left alone. And again, in the most gentle, loving way, I was so being spoken to kindly, wisely and helped along this. So I've since completely surrendered to the not knowingness, but the willingness and opened myself up. And so it's so perfect that I'm receiving downloads. And so I'm telling you this because one of the things I'm doing right now in this time of being quarantined is saying, wow, what if I use this time, which before was always filled <laughs> with calendar and people and social and clients, but it's not so much anymore. And what if I use this time to be with source energy, to say, activate me, use me, or let's just have conversation. 
And it's not meditation. It's way deeper than that. What I am seeking and being being available for. And I feel so called to offer this to Sharon because I have a strong sense that as a brilliant businesswoman, she has some very powerful gifts that have been begging to be noticed and to be used. And that this is also a time when you talk about Leah, her business changing, this is also a time for her where should she choose to use it, like stay away from the fear or the wonderment because it'll all work out. She'll always land on her feet. She'll always be a brilliant businesswoman that there's something else waiting to be birthed. Yeah, yeah. that's such a good point. It, it, is, it is different than landing on your feet, right? There's this, there are, there are people who will take this opportunity and it is an opportunity of time and space that we have such a different world to rocketeer. Like they will rocket out of this from a completely different perspective. So yes, when I say her business will be different, she's in one of those phases where different gets to be whatever she really wants it to be. And yes, you're right. She will need to figure out those pieces for herself that really have been, hmm. okay. So the Oracle said neglected. So for her, it's a neglection. So she, I feel would, you know, know what that looks like for her, but it, but it, it's a part of her that's been neglected. Yes. And, and she wrote, um, it's funny that she would mention Marie Kondo and just so you have a reference point. And so she, she works in a realm, by the way, that unclutters and cleans and moves and all of this. So it's, she's saying, it's funny you would even bring that up. Um, and, and I've been on this cleaning uh, recycling spree, which I just love. I love the spaciousness and the energy. And uh, Jean or Jeannie wrote in, we will not bounce back, we can bounce up. Yeah, definitely, you know, just semantics. I don't want to get too lost in that, but it's true. Uh, we're going to bounce, that's for sure. I, th I think we're going to actually departicalize and then come back wholly different, like different DNA strands. I also feel like this is, I, God, where is all this coming from? <laughs> I feel like this is a time of mutation too. I really feel like this is a time where uh, we've all been talking for so long about up leveling. And I feel like this is like happening dramatically. We almost have to be here womb like for when we come back out and the new choices that are taking place, the new businesses that are going to be viable, the new ways of being. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The way, new ways of being is such a good way to put it. And I was, speaking with a client who's a doctor and she was saying, you know, this, this is a virus. Like this is going to, this is already, you know, spread the globe. So it's already affecting all of us in some way or another. Yeah. Um, and, and yes, on a cellular level and actually on a quantum level, we are all transforming right now. We are all changing and transmuting. And because we are also sentient beings who are co-creators, we, that's why this is such an opportunity because we have the power to play a role in what that creation looks like next. And it's so, the, what I've been saying and telling people is it's like the veil between those two things is so thin right now, we are so close to it. If you can imagine in your, wherever you are that you just reached up and touched it with your hand. Like that's how close we are to it right now. And in that way, that's when the power of what we have in front of us really to me speaks to how much different things will be. And we've been talking about this. Like you said, we people in our roles and, and in our industry have been talking about, you know, having adaptability, being, being conscious, you know, all of these phrases, you know, that were somewhat theory to the masses are now becoming practical. And, and in that practicality, we are changing the face of the world. Yes, absolutely. Well, folks, we're going to come back in just a minute with more with Leah Dunlap. And if you have questions, I shall do. So whoever gets their question in first wins. Uh, if there's a writer in you, I, what I do out in the world, let me take a pause here to say this. I'm a visibility shaman. I help you with the inside job to heal what's keeping you visible and the outside job to actually execute the strategy and the technique and the coaching in order to be fully visible as a beautiful you out into the world with your message, your business, and your products. I help you to write a page turner book. Take your book and turn it into a guaranteed international bestseller and also learn how to be interviewed on radio and podcasts and get results. 
So if that appeals to you, go to my website, debbiedashinger.com. Also, for those who are creatives, those who have a book inside of them who have always wondered, reach out. I can help you write your book. And I've got something also quite easy for people who say, I would like to do something simple or I don't want to write an entire book, but I'd like to write. You can use this time because I am producing an anthology book about canines. What better joyful subject than dogs? The anthology compilation is called Dogs Are Paradise, and everything is handled for you. All you need to do is show up and write, or if you even don't want to write, you will be interviewed and your chapter will be transcribed for you. If you are interested, register because the chapters are going. Go to debbied.net slash anthology. Need to spell the name right, D-E-B-B-I-D.net slash anthology. This is going to include a guaranteed international bestseller launch. It will be fully edited for you. The cover will be handled, the formatting, the ebook. Go to debbied.net and see all of what this package includes. You can be a published author this year. You don't even have to leave your house. <laughs> and we will be connecting. I'm looking forward to the people who have already signed up. And just know, whatever your chapter feels like it's about, that's what it's about. So if you have a tale to tell or you have a tale to wag, woof, just know this is the book for you, debbied.net slash anthology. And if you're tuning in after we've started, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. I'm speaking with Leah Dunlap, the Oracle on Purpose. She is an intuitive business architect. You can find out more at oracleonpurpose.com. So for people, Leah, who are chasing or previously were chasing the latest business trend or strategy and feel really chronically disappointed, uh, unfulfilled, what are some really, I'm looking for profundity right now, you know, at a time when I think people could use real guidance. What are some real tangible things that people can do that will help them, guide them, get them where they want to go quickly with some clarity? Fantastic. Yeah. Some really great things are happening right now as we look at this. And it is an opportunity to kind of dive into what you have put your energy and your effort into and where your alignment is and where you've basically, I don't want to call it wasted, but you've given away energy. Let's say it that way. You've given away energy that isn't returning to you in the same way you expected. I'm being very purposeful about those words because it can look so differently. And so the practical way to look at that is to ask yourself a few questions that would help you to make better choices moving forward because I think these, these basically these five things would help to give you the process um, that will lead you into like a better decision, you know, moment, like a moment of looking at what you're doing and, and choosing the right opportunities. There are lots of things that you've done and taking away, first of all, anything that you did bring forward. So no failure, only feedback, anything that did work in the way that it worked. That's important. Like how did, whether that was, um, like you said, like whether that's a marketing um, activity that you did, whether that's um, a, a product launch that you ran or a service that you provided that is no longer viable, what parts of it were good? What parts of it did work for you? What parts of it were actually creating some sort of flow and which ones weren't? So look at it from a perspective of rather than being engaged in guilt feelings about it, right? Look from feedback, look for, look for, um, so almost from a scientific um, experimental viewpoint of what parts of this were, were actually valuable, you know, and as you look at what you're going to do next, you know, first of all, it is about clarifying your purpose because a lot of times we run off to follow someone else's version of purpose. And especially with as many things that are going on online right now and how many opportunities are there for you to get new, new shiny objects to follow, you know, you've got a lot happening. Can you first slow down enough? And that could be just for moments to really clarify if there was every option tomorrow to show up and do your life differently or in a new way or in a more aligned way, 
what would that look like? So the clarity of that purpose, like why you're here to, to give something to the world. And then, and this is important too, as you said, know your numbers. Number two, know your numbers. What do you need to live the way you want to live? Where are you really? I've, I'm shocked sometimes when I work with clients and you know, they're, as you said, they're, they're very accomplished. They have, um, you know, what some people would say, you know, lots of money and lots of, you know, financial success. And yet they, they, in a moment, they can't really clarify or actually quantify their numbers. So knowing what those are and getting comfortable with them um, so that you can really tap into them and watch them and see where they're growing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, three, I think this is something that everybody also is going through right now is like, as you said, what is source? What is soul? What is spirit? What, it, what is all this about? What's the grander picture? So, you know, reconnecting to your version of spiritual source so that you can be fed, so that you can be tapped in as you make decisions as well. And four, you know, create a practical plan, have a plan in place that takes into account those first three things and gives you space to pivot, which is what we're finding now. People that have space right now to pivot are doing much better. And five, you know, get accountability and support. We are not meant, even especially right now, like we're all reaching out to them because we know we are not meant to do this alone, right? The fact that we want so much now to be connected to people is a sign to me that we are recognizing the value of, of connection and community and collaboration. So having accountability, having support, when you put those pieces together, then you have a more rounded opportunity to move your own ball forward, whatever that looks like, and do it in a way that is aligned because the support and the connection is there to keep you making bold choices that are leaps of faith based on your purpose, not just based on watching someone else's version of success. Yeah. For sure. And I think it's so beautiful how people have different pieces of the puzzle in what they came here with their gifts and with this big weaving right now going, reaching out communities is finding people who are good at so many different aspects that are really helpful and complementary right now. I'm curious also when you say that, Lee, I want to know more about you. So when you talk about these five steps and what it takes, and I know you actually came from another background once upon a time. So what helped you to get from where you were and figure all that out and to carve out a new path? How did you get past expectations and how did you get past the strategies and figuring your way through to the other side to land where you are now? Well, for me, the, the journey is, been a long one. It started when I was really young. And the biggest piece of that puzzle for me was I, like many people, um, had a gift inside to, to speak to the Oracle, to get these guidance, to get this, these downloads. And because it wasn't accepted in my family when I was growing up, I decided, okay, I don't want to be diff different. I don't want to be weird. I want to be appreciated, accepted, and I want to be seen as successful. So I put all that in a box and I went off to work in the corporate world. The problem was, as I was working in the corporate world, I was still secretly using those gifts. <laughs> I, I was using them and what would happen is, it would look like me getting um, you know, promotions that quote unquote I didn't deserve because I could read people and tell people what they needed to hear and I could see plans and processes that would fix problems in businesses and they would just tap me on the shoulder and I'd go flying over everybody else, which was great. And it was a trap mm -hmm. because it allowed me to stay hidden under the radar and not really deliver my gift. And so the fullness of what I was here to do wasn't really being given, right? I was, it was eking out. And so I started to like do weekend uh, retreats and I would go on women's retreats and I would speak and I would train and I would teach about these, um, thoughts and ideas and, and these steps that the Oracle was providing to me, like I was doing this dual. I was doing this for like about 10 years altogether, doing it back and forth. And one day I was driving back to the office on a corporate sales job and I thought I was having a heart attack. I couldn't breathe. I started to shake and sweat. 
and I was in rush hour traffic and I drove 15 more miles to tell my boss, I think I'm having a heart attack. And you know, while I was in recovery, I realized this is, this is wild. I, this is, I, nobody and no job is worth me losing my life. And really it was all of that internal struggle to say like, this is not really what you're supposed to do. This is not your real work and it is time to do your real work. And so I put down that job, a corporate job, but the beauty of that is after a time, I realized everything I learned while I was working in all these really great um, positions in all these different corporate world um, uh, you know, circles that I took all of that with me too. Mm -hmm. And that's important because I think people sometimes think they have to let go of everything they've done so far. It's like, no, I integrated it. I integrated it and that's how I call myself the intuitive business architect because all of those business structures, all of those skills that I took away for sales, marketing and operations management, I use to help my clients now. And I use them in conjunction with that guidance from the Oracle that helps us to look at their business plans and actually see the map, see where they need to go, ask the questions that will get them moving forward. So all of that to me um, is why I love what I get to do now and, and the ability to bring all of me um, more fully to light so I can show up and share that with other people. Oh my God. Most people don't know, Leah, that once upon a time I worked at NASA. And um, <laughs> so not the NASA I belong to now, which is the North American Sommelier Association, but I mean the rocket up into space on <laughs> NASA. And I feel the same that even though there was a part of my soul that was just like, what are we doing here? This is so difficult, right? It was really difficult. And if I didn't have the people skills I do, I would have just died there. But I got so much business acumen that I use as an entrepreneur today. I got an education I could not have gotten anywhere else. So there's tons I pulled with me for which I'm very, very grateful for. And so when you tell this story, Leah, what was the most difficult choice that you had to make besides risking your life to go tell your boss after 15 miles? I think I'm dying, you know, outside of that, but really in your journey to get here today, fully being you without apologizing to your family or, you know, negotiating who you are in the corporate world, but really just being this and successfully this, what was the difficult choice you had to make to fulfill this? I think the biggest, most difficult choice that I made, um, I was kind of forced into. By forced, I mean the, literally the source was like, okay, that's it, you're out there now. Um, when I accidentally blurted out uh, a download from the Oracle in the middle of a group of speakers, you know, because I was still coming from this uh, corporate, I speak on top, you know, and I was still hiding that piece of me a little bit. Um, calling myself intuitive, like in a very soft, subtle way, not saying, I hear a voice from the Oracle that tells me specifically, this is what you need to know. And at that moment, um, I couldn't not be seen as the Oracle anymore. And what happened was I blurted out something and I got to see firsthand in a group of quote unquote strangers, the impact of that insight for that person and I couldn't ever go back. Like it was very clear at that moment, there's no going back now. Like it's out there. People know you as someone who can see into them and see what's going on and help. And you can't go back now. Mm. And, I, and I, I remember the call I made to my husband that day, which was really incredible. I had no idea how much I had still been hiding. Here I thought I was, you know, living this, this fullness. And I called my husband during their br the break and I said, you know how I see things and I hear things and I can actually uh, tell things about people without you know, them telling me? And there was this long pause. So you know how you use cell phones, this is a while ago. Cell phones, you're like, okay, did I lose him? So I'm like, hello, hello, can you hear me? Babe, can you hear me? And he said, yeah, I hear you. I just don't know what you're talking about. My husband and I had been married for 20 years at that point. So this was not that long ago. And I was like, what? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I hadn't even really made it clear. Like I thought I was making it clear, mm. but I hadn't. And so I had to come, you know, to terms with the fact that even though I was thought I was saying it, I wasn't being honest. And that's hard to say because I really felt like 
first of all, truth is a very big core value for me. So I was telling like versions of it, yeah. you know, in ways, but I had never really come right out and say, look, I'm an Oracle. I, I talk to this person. I get the wealth entity. I get this guidance and this is what I know. And that was the moment when I feel like my, my real work took off. Totally. You know? I right. love that. So yeah. you came out of the Oracle closet. Yes. Yeah, which is better than the Oreo closet. But <laughs> the fact that you came out, like, and that your reality was affirming to you, you indeed have not been out. Your own husband has actually not been receiving the information. I love that. So it gave you an opportunity to make a choice, right? That's a real crossroads. Am I going to keep inside the closet or am I going to fully step out, put on the cape and fly? Yeah, absolutely. And my husband grew up with uh, people that lived in the woods in uh, California, um, you know, that he had deemed early on when he talked to me about them that we, you know, come from the hippie era and we're very hippie. So very woo, super woo. And he had all these th things about what that looked like. So it was an interesting time period for us to say, okay, so guess what? You married somebody who's probably more woo than any of those people that you know that you speak about. So what are we going to do about, how does that look? And yeah, so it was, it was, it was definitely a moment in my life where I had to really stand up for something that um, in a totally different way, for sure. Take a stand, put a stake in the ground and say, this is me, this is mine, right? Yes. And if everything's divine and put together correctly, then your gift was exactly why you're here, without a doubt. And so for people who are listening and saying, I want that, I don't know what it takes to get that, but I want that feeling of being fully embodied for why I'm here. I want, and I also concurrently want to attract the money and the opportunities and the clients like magic. So I know this is, a, this is difficult without somebody very specific possibly to deal with, and you could deal with me if you want, or in generalizations, but are there ways, are there tips you can give? Because I think that's actually a really important hitch point. Many people will say, oh, I'm stepping into it. I'm offering this. I'm giving that. But how do you do that and make a sustainable, awesome mofo income at the same time and attract the people who are yours? Right. I, I think that one of the biggest keys when we're talking about doing that, so let's see. Um, yeah, we can, I'll do general. <laughs> I think that will work. Um, so generally speaking, once you, once you know what it is, what it, what, what your real unique, I, I call it your ULP, your unique life purpose is, mm -hmm. and you also have the understanding of what you've brought to it through your experiences. So what people call your business genius, right? All the things you've learned for a very specific reason, I usually find, you put those together and you look at those and you create the system for delivering it in a way that, that allows you to maintain alignment and that creates a beacon to your very exact client or customer. In other words, once you have that aligned, what I see with my clients is they get so clear. It's like a television set, like the old tiny television sets when they were out of, out of a tune. And some people will watch the screen for a minute. Like we did when we were younger, because we just desperately wanted to know about that show. Most people won't. So the clearer it comes in, that's what you are to people like you, they can see you and what you deliver. And so once you have that, that clarity, then you can create a process for bringing people in. And that looks like, you know, those are all practical tools. Like that's aligning your marketing, aligning your, your message. And of course, aligning the process. This is the piece that I think a lot of times people don't want to talk about, but there is a process and everybody's process um, can be fine tuned to who they really are and how they want to show up and do their work. You know, there are people that are doing the, you know, the virtual world right now that feel like they're being thrusted into it because of what we have right now. Um, and there's still a way for you to do that. That is yours, like designed specifically for how you do your work and get, you know, and, and, and find a flow of prosperity through that. Like there's those two things don't have to be separate. And once you're most aligned, 
what you'll get are people that are showing up that have been looking for that very thing. And I think the more unique we are, mm -hmm. the better. When like, you have the ULP, Leah, yes, the, the uni unique life purpose, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my brain around. So how does, how does that look like when somebody works with you? Because you talked about messaging, you talked about marketing. So what are the elements that you actually provide? You can even give an example of a client or clients you've worked with, what that looks like uh, and how that manifests. So how, you know, how they find their person, how they start getting an ROI. Right, exactly. So, so the first piece of that, yeah, is to understand what it is. So we look at, um, we kind of, what I do is like we reverse engineer it. We reverse engineer what that looks like for you um, through a process that I use that helps them to kind of dial down into what their core values are and what roles that they already are fulfilling that and, and just like completing that actually are aligned with those top core values. Mm. And once we've done that and we've kind of filtered through what bubbles up are usually three to five. And I know many people have heard this before, three to five core values and the extra piece is knowing where you're delivering them now in a way that is using your skills. So you, you put those two things together. And then what we do is when we're talking about messaging, we can also talk about your audience because the people you want to work with are looking for that, that one thing. So I can actually give you an example right now of, of how this, um, it's almost like how this can go wrong. So if somebody just has some words, like they believe in, um, they've read or seen, you know, information about you should know what your core values are and they sit and they do that. What happens is we also have a filter. And so we have this judgment filter that says, well, that's not a very good core value. It, you know, somebody, for example, I'll give you myself. I used to think that one of my core values was gratitude because I love gratitude and it's part of the work that I do. It's part of the program that I created 24 years ago. So I thought for sure it was going to be gratitude. It is not on my list. I love gratitude. I still love gratitude. It is not a part of what I do and what I provide that makes me different, right? I had a client whose, whose word, we kept trying to work on her process and we came up on a word that was, and she kept wanting to say peace. And as we we're talking about it, for me, luckily, because I was there with her working through the process, I was checking with the Oracle every time she would say a word. And she kept saying peace. And I kept saying, that's not the word. And we found out it was calm. Mm. And as soon as we started adding calm into her marketing, mm. it hit a different target of people. It hit her people right. So there's were, actually, a, so I love this. There's actually yeah. a vibration. Yes. to the marketing piece it's yes. indigenous to each person <laughs> yes and what i love about this and what i could really perceive through looking at your website and your questions and how you work with people is that when you talk about a conscious business this is my interpretation correct me or support me here <laughs> i felt you were saying that my business your business everybody listening your business becomes an entity it has a life force of its own. And actually, and this is how I deal with people around books when I coach them, I tell them your book is an entity. You don't have to go to your head. There's nothing there, by the way, that's going to help you. <laughs> Everything is already in the book. Even if it's not been written yet, you can actually dialogue with it and it will tell you everything you need to know. So is it that, is it so for um, you? Well? That is such a great example. That is such a great description. It's so true. Like conscious leadership and, and having a conscious business is having the business be alive, hmm. right? It is its own entity and it has its own vibration. That's the perfect example. It has its own vibration. And I, I usually say it, it has its own signal, right? So the signal you're sending out, if it's not strong enough, then the people who need that signal can't see it. You're a beacon for your people. And the clearer you are, the more powerful that beacon is, and then the more powerful the magnet that the uh, magnetism is, and the manifestation becomes, mm. because then they can feel it, they can resonate with it, and and the universe hums at different vibrational levels, and so that vibration it's matched and it's met, and so when we can actually create not just what your avatar is as like um, an external, but in that vibrational way, like how they're thinking what they're thinking, why they live where they live, 
what it is that they're seeking because it matches with who you are and what you provide, that's when you get the, the opportunity to really draw people in who happily pay you, you know, are thrilled to pay you because they've been looking for you and the way you show up. Oof. Yum, yum, yum. Well, folks, quick break here. This is Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream. And if you're loving the show and you want to subscribe, we're in 40 different outlets. It's award-winning. You can also go to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. Please leave a review and thanks. I read them all, by the way. I'm always grateful to see what you guys write. And for those of you who are tuning in, I'm speaking with Leah Dunlap. We'll be back in just a minute for the very, very short final segment. And if it is yours to write a book, contact me at debbiedashinger.com. Or if you would like to write a chapter in the new dog anthology and you have a canine story to tell, go to debbied.net slash anthology. That's D-E-B-B-I-D dot net slash anthology. We're back with more with Leah, who clears out your confusion in order to learn why you're here, what you're born to do, and your next steps. You can learn more about her at oracleonpurpose.com. And Leah, this is Dare to Dream. And my question to you is, what do you next dare to dream? What are your uh, future dreams and goals? Thank you. That is a wonderful question. And I do always have my own dreams and visions of the future uh, that come to me. And one big one right now um, has to do with conscious leaders. And I've come to the vision that there are leaders right now that are rising up. Um, I got this vision last year, actually, at the end of the year, that there are these leaders rising up and that there is, they are the levers that are going to shift the face of humanity and help heal the world. And my vision, my dream for that is that we get to go away together. Interestingly enough, we were, <laughs> we were, we were on an island together, um, which is kind of interesting now that I think about it. But the reality of it is that, it that that's my island vision. right there? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was just thinking about this. <laughs> so you and I on this island, I should have got my own island backdrop. But so there's a place called Koh Phrathong Island in Thailand. Um, and I want to take the top 25 cool. conscious leaders there. And the goal is to, um, to facilitate, hold space and use the Oracle um, to help us create an actual tactical plan mm. for helping solve some of the world's biggest problems, including, uh, you know, human rights, water rights, Eco ecological rights, which I think is a really big one. And really looking at like, how do we bring our resources, not only our gifts, but our resources together um, as conscious leaders who are putting their, honestly, their money and their gifts where their mouth is and, and doing it so that we actually have a tactical plan before we even leave the island. I'm not saying I won't let anybody off the island. But I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that the goal is that when we do leave, yeah. when we do leave, that we actually already have a plan in place so that when we go back to the quote unquote real world, we all know what our roles are and how we're going to do this. What, how can people work with you? Where can they get a hold of you? I've given out your website. Is there something else they should know? Yeah, I think one of the first things we've been talking about is alignment. So one great way to, to see if um, you know, I can support you is to take the quick quiz that I have called powerbizquiz.com. At powerbizquiz.com, we'll talk about your alignment you'll know by the time you're done how, how far you're in alignment or perhaps how far you're out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you can actually have the opportunity to talk to me further about what you can do to make sure you stay in that alignment so that we can have you at your best. And quickly tell us, what is the one ritual, especially right now, the one ritual or practice that you use daily, Leah Dunlap, that ah. helps keep you grounded and an oracle? Every single day for the last 25 years, you know, minus perhaps a handful of days, honestly, I spend my nights um, in gratitude, which is why I was saying earlier, my gratitude piece was surprising. Yeah. But what I do beyond that is I actually hold space for all of my clients, current and past and future. I used to say, um, I sit in that space and I see all these little glowing orbs of light and I tuck them in at night into a big pile like a mother hen tucking in her chicks. And I hold space for them to find their own 
vision. And so I do that every night. I, I tuck everybody in with myself um, included in that. And I look and appreciate every single night at least 10 things that um, if not more, that I'm grateful for having experienced and having in my life. I am so grateful, Leah, that you came on the show today and shared your brilliance. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was my honor. Pleasure. I end today's show with this quote, which is from Maya Angelou. Success is liking yourself, liking what you do and liking how you do it. Tune in to the upcoming interviews. This is your number one transformation conversation. This is Debbie Dashinger. Subscribe so you can hear this every week. And next week's upcoming guest is Sherry Anshara. I'm very excited to have her here. I've experienced her work. She is a remarkable medical intuitive healer, and she absolutely is taking questions. So you're going to want to engage with her so you can get some help and some 411. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining today on Dare to Dream. It's been a pleasure. And for all of you, remember the secret of success is having the courage to begin your quest in the first place. Stay well and healthy.